I'll be honest with you, I haven't got any content for today. Um, I haven't been out shooting since I was out with my film camera, which you watched on Sunday. And right now, as you watch this, I'm in the Alps indulging in some hiking and landscape photography. So you can expect quite a lot of content coming up over the next few weeks. So I thought I'd do something I've never done before. I really want to um, try and add value to every single one of my videos and, or add value to the people who watch my videos. So I have racked my brains and come up with five tips to help you make it as a landscape photographer. Now these are all actual real things that you can do and these are all stuff I've done and I'm just gonna pass them on. So let's just jump straight into this. Tip number one, only publish your best work. With the pressure of social media and the ease of which we can create images, edit images and upload images, it's so tempting, in fact it's too tempting, just to share everything you take. But I would seriously, seriously consider valuing quality over quantity. Think about your favourite photographers of all time. How many of their images can you actually think of right now? Probably just a handful. People don't want to be bombarded by hundreds of images every day. They just want to be inspired by a few select quality images. This also adds value to your content because people know when you publish work, you're publishing something that you're really proud of. With that being said, not all published images are published images. It's all about context. So if you're looking for critique or doing some testing or you just want to show somebody how good your view is, then that's fine. Just make sure people can differentiate between your sort of published gallery images and your general social media content. Tip number two, think bigger than just one image. With your portfolio or when submitting work to a publication or an online website or anything like that, think about the bigger story. Don't get me wrong, standalone images are incredibly powerful and I certainly would not want to deter anybody from going after that one special image. But think about this from a publication point of view. If you're submitting work to a magazine, for example, they don't want just one image, they want they want a story, so they want a series of images with text. To do this, shoot a series of images that have a theme. The theme can be anything, just so long as the images relate to one another. This could be an expedition, a season, a particular subject, a piece of kit, a type of landscape, such as mountain, seascape, woodland. It literally could be anything, so long as there is some kind of structure there and the images can go from one to the other to the other. And by linking these images, you can create a feature. And it's a feature which is much more likely to get published than just a single image. And remember that these publications need us, magazines, newspapers, websites, blog posts, anything, they need us. We, as photographers, as storytellers, as content creators, we are incredibly valuable to these huge global publications because without us, they wouldn't have content to put in their magazines or websites or whatever and, and thus make money. So if you have a favorite photography magazine or any kind of photography website, not even photography, just general publications, there will almost always be a how to submit your work email address or an address, check the back of the magazine for example. They all, almost all of them anyway, will accept publications from people like us, people like you. A little tip, the media absolutely love anything to do with weather. So if you find yourself in an unusual weather event, whether it's snow or hailstone or a storm at different times of the season when it perhaps shouldn't be happening, get your camera, shoot a load of images and consider submitting that to the newspapers because I guarantee that they will publish them. If you don't know where to start, check out Rex Features, Science Photo for example if you like to shoot nighttime images or anything kind of sciencey nature based. Check out Bav Media as well, they'll, um, they'll act as an agent and they'll submit your work to the national newspapers. Bear in mind, most of these take a cut of about 50%, but it really is a great place to start and all of these companies I have used in the past. And remember, always check the back pages of your favorite photography magazines. I guarantee they will have a submission process. 
Tip number three, shoot original images. Now, don't get me wrong, you shoot what the hell you want to shoot. You go out, you shoot iconic landscapes, you build your portfolio, you learn how your camera works, and you learn how light works, and just shoot and shoot and shoot. There's nothing wrong with that. But soon, you'll start to learn that the world of landscape photography is an incredibly saturated place. And these iconic locations, you know, images taken at these places, are ten a penny. They, they there is there are tens of thousands of images that are indistinguishable from one another. So to stand out from the crowd, you do need to be original and you need to do something a little bit different. And this, I believe, is the greatest challenge in landscape photography today. A few tips to help visit iconic locations, but look closer at the landscape, try and find the intimate landscape within, because everybody who's at that viewpoint, it's almost guaranteed that they're all shooting the exact same image. If you can just go in close and try and think outside of the box and isolate a subject within that big landscape, then that's a great place to start. Shoot subjects that are forever changing and shoot them in unusual weather situations. So if you do capture an image, it's very unlikely that that scene or that image can be recreated because it was a fairly rare event or you know that scene doesn't exist anymore. So anything that's malleable and that's changing with the seasons, that's a good subject to kind of focus in on and work. A good thing to consider as well is don't always publish the locations of your images. It's sometimes quite nice to keep a few little secrets to yourself. And finally, explore locations that are close to home, locations that other photographers wouldn't think of shooting, because I can almost guarantee that there will be a hidden little corner somewhere close to your home that offers fantastic potential, and I can almost guarantee that you'll have that all to yourself. Tip number four, don't be shy. Converse with other photographers, talk to them, tweet them, email them. If you see a photographer out on the beach, go over and say hello. Don't be shy about trying to interact with photographers online who may have enormous followings. They're, they're just normal people, just like you and just like me. Networking is incredibly important. Go to events, go on workshops, go to places where there are lots of people who are like-minded because you never know who you're going to meet and who you're going to talk to. And it's quite rare that I hire somebody. But every time I've hired somebody, the first place I've looked is Twitter. So that just goes to show that by interacting with people online and just generally just chatting or commenting every now and again, other people of influence, other photographers or editors or publishers, they will start to learn who you are and they'll know what you do or what you specialize in. And then if they ever find themselves in need of some help or somebody with your skill set, they're, they're going to know, they're going to know to go to you. And it's so easy just to send a message on Twitter and bosh, you might well just get yourself a job. If you have an idea for a collaboration with somebody else, go for it. Don't worry if that person has a much greater body of work than you or a much bigger following than you. It really doesn't matter. What does matter is that you can offer something to that person, that you can add value. If you can add value to another photographer and invite them into a collaborative situation, there's a good chance that they're going to say yes because it will benefit them as much as it will benefit you. I'm going to the Alps in, I'm and well, while you're watching this, I'm now in the Alps. I'm in the Alps with two people from Switzerland, not because they're famous or they have any kind of huge following, but they invited me there because they have a skill set. They're mountain guides. They know the area well. Therefore, they add so much value and they offer me things that I couldn't do by myself. Tip number five and my final tip is lose your ego. There is no room for an ego in landscape photography. You don't know everything, you will never know everything and you will never be the best. You need to be open and happy with making mistakes. You also need to be open to learning. There is nothing worse than being so arrogant that you think that you do everything perfectly. It's important to be open to criticism from anybody. The chances are they're probably just trying to help. But with that being said, you also kind of need to realize that you can't and never will please everybody. 
There are people out there who just simply don't like you for whatever, for no other reason than you're more successful than them. And this will always be the case. So nothing you say or do will ever change that. So as soon as you realize this and realize that you can't please everybody and you 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 start to it's it's liberating you start to shoot for yourself you start to open your mind to new types of photography and you start to shoot what you really love and your landscape photography will soon start to develop and grow in ways that you can't imagine all because you're just shooting for you and that is incredibly important. So I hope you've, I hope this video is okay for you. I hope you've taken something away from it. Um, and that, yeah, that, those are my, those are just a few tips of mine um, that I've learned over the years. So thank you so much for watching, and I guess or I hope that I will see you again on Sunday. All right, bye for now.